uh, wild, uh, this is Oregon grapefruit. This is the classic Oregon grapefruit. This is actually uh, Berberus repin, which is the official uh, This is the fish, the official medicine. This is the official organ grape. Yes, this right here. And so what I do, I never bother digging these. I actually grab, like, come over here. I grab, and I and I put my hand down, and I yank until I pull up a stem like this, and the whole part is used. The stem, the leaf, everything in it. The yellower, the better. The yellower, the stronger. That's the color of berberine, the main alkaloid, the main active constituent. But it's also in the leaf, and it's in the tiny stems. And no longer do we just use the root. In fact, we don't even use the root of our mahonias anymore, our berberises. We just find the aerial parts, yank up on them. The big gnarly root is still underground and we'll send up shoots next time. That's how we keep sustainability here. And we use this entire thing gets tinctured up as a fresh plant tincture. I save my leaves. I usually strip my leaves off, save them and dry them for my salves. I love Mahonia leaf dried, ground up and put into my salves. It's a powerful antibacterial. I just passed this piece around so everybody can see the the yellow, and then you can have it afterwards. <laughs> Bring that back to Janet when you're done. We gathered some here. Yes, this is a great place. Can we just a clip it at the base. Don't clip it. Pull up on it. Okay. <laughs> because if because if you actually pull up on it, yeah. uh, you you'll get more. <laughs> that yellow color is you're amazing. You're breaking it off yeah. underground Berberine. most of the time, and that's healthier for the plant than say clipping it up at top because it, the top part's just going to dry off. If you break it down closer to the root mass itself, it will make newer shoots come up much, much quicker. I've grown this in my garden and done that for years. Uh, it grows really well. In fact, a piece like this, if you leave it out for a day to dry and then stick it in the ground, it will root and create a whole new Mahonia plant. Oh. It'll actually make little hairs on it and such. But you got to let the break scab over a little bit. Before you plant it. Before you plant it, uh -huh. yeah. But you'll find yellow, which is the, indi the indication. Number one, it's a way the holly-like leaves that are opposite of each other and the yellow color of the stem and the roots. Mm. This is how we identify this against hollies or oaks that might have some barbs or anything else. There's nothing else out here in our forest and pretty much in the United States, there's not a whole lot of things that have yellow root that aren't in the Berberus family. That's gorgeous. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful color. Famous old-fashioned dye. Mm -hmm. It was a historically used old dye. Of course, we're using it as a medicine plant of, of you know, of just premier proportions as its antibacterial, bitter digestive stimulation, all the Mahonia. Uh, Berberus. Berberus is the official new genus for this. Oh, it's not Mahonia anymore. It's not Mahonia, but you, it's good to know the two names because if you're reading in a book, to know it's if you're reading in a book and it's an older book, they're going to be calling it Mahonia. Mahonia. If it's some newer, I like that name. It's cool. Berberus. So it's good to know both names yeah. because you'll find it in the literature still under Mahonia. Well, right. It's crazy that they change the names so many times. Yeah. Babble. Babble. Is there any essential oil in that? Uh, probably none, actually. This is a nice, who would like, like this piece of sure. I'll take it. It does have a nice Everybody subtle smell. Harvesting wild cherry, if in doubt, just make sure you smell it to confirm it. <laughs> 